Critical infrastructure, by definition, is infrastructure that supports the citizens of the country. Uh, for example, an airport, okay, a transportation system, the national banking uh, network, so the payment switch, it could be the stock market, it could be the national power grid. They're all examples of critical infrastructure. Um, why are these pieces of infrastructure targeted? Because if a piece of infrastructure is targeted, of course it can have massive impact. So you imagine if the entire electrical grid goes down, it impacts every and each Filipino. If the stock market crashes, it has an impact on stock prices and you know the, the, the national economy. So this is what's called critical infrastructure. In recent times, because of the massive potential impact, countries are closely looking at identifying what is our critical infrastructure, quantifying what would be the impact if there was an incident, and then understanding what is the resiliency. Can we bring up the infrastructure quickly if there is an incident, but also to identify where does the risk lie in the infrastructure. So of course, a big part of the risk is around cybersecurity because most organizations in critical infrastructure and from governments is digitized now. So if you look at ASEAN as an example, many countries have a digital economy and digital services. There is an awareness of the growing threat of a cyber attack, the growing awareness of the potential risk. Uh, the deeper, broader question is how big is the risk? So what do I mean by that? Have you actually undertaken a security risk posture assessment? Where are you in terms of cybersecurity? What is your, you know, your exposure in terms of a potential threat? Uh, where could you be compromised? So I don't think every organization has done this. So we help the public sector and the private you know, companies and enterprises do this assessment. But more importantly, we provide you a pathway forward. I mean, how would you mitigate against the risk? How would you respond? How would you bring back the infrastructure in a quick manner to minimize downtime and impact to the economy, to your citizens, etc. So we do all of that and we do that very, very well. I think the heightened risk in this part of the world, ASEAN, which is very interesting as an example is, let's look at 5G. Uh, many telcos are rolling out 5G now, so it, it has the potential to offer incredible opportunities around you know, smart devices, IoT, the medical space, manufacturing. But a lot of these devices which are supported by 5G um, can be easily compromised because they don't, uh, they've never been managed from a security standpoint. They are not, uh, they're new threat surfaces that can be attacked by you know, bad actors. And a lot of organizations are not prepared for this. So 5G will introduce a whole host of devices that have never been managed before. So imagine, in a hospital, suddenly medical equipment can be compromised. Can you imagine if a patient, somehow the reading uh, on his health state of breathing, et cetera, is incorrect, the potential risk to, to the patient. Likewise, in the manufacturing space, you know, if there's certain production lines that could be compromised and IP stolen, what happens if IP and data has been stolen from an exploration drill rig? So there's, you know, there's IP ramifications, there's patient ramifications, there's data being leaked and lost, etc. Imagine if you bring down a critical infrastructure, the electrical grid, or let's use the Philippines as an example. If you, you take down the payments network, many Filipinos, I know for a fact, live on a daily wage. They will go to the ATM, they will draw cash. It's a cash economy. If, if the ATM system is taken down, imagine how that would impact the Philippines. A lot of organizations over the years have built their security um, portfolio buying and using many different products. So they might have in their environment 20, 30, up to 50 to 60 plus solutions. Um, the problem with that is you have greater exposure to a security threat because you're managing different products. If you can consolidate your security portfolio from 50 to 40 to 30 to 20 or less, it's much harder for a hacker to attack you, organizations to consolidate, thereby minimizing the threat surface, the potential types of attacks. We can help consolidate, minimize risk. And here's the beautiful part in this current economic climate, 
save money.